Hello, I'm Alan Hawes. Let's get right into it. At this point, we've created the schematic, we've configured all the components, we've set the pens, and now we're ready to work with the firmware. I'm just gonna go slowly through the firmware. I'll explain what all of the pieces and parts do, and then you'll be able to copy it for yourself because we're going to post it onto cypress.com. First of all, I'll create a UNT16 that will represent the finger position on the slider. This will be a global variable, so it's accessible inside of the BLE firmware. The second variable I create is called the CapSense Notify. This will be set to zero when notifications are off, and it will be set to one when notifications are on. The next thing I'll do is I'll create a function called update LED. This function, when it's called, will update the GAT database with the current state of the LED. The first thing it does is if the BLE is connected, and you can find that out with the CYBLE underscore get state function. If it's not connected, then you don't wanna update the GAT database. So you'll just immediately return from this function. If it is connected, then you'll wanna update the CYBLE underscore LED CapSense underscore LED underscore care underscore handle. Now remember, when you set up the profile and the services and the characteristics inside of the GAT database, all inside of the BLE component, we name the LED characteristic LED. When you do that, Creator will automatically build a pound define that will reference you into the table. CYBLE underscore LED CapSense underscore LED underscore care underscore handle. Once you do that, you read the value of the pen with the read function, you flip it. The reason you flip it is the LED is active low, which means it's zero when the light's on and it's one when the light's off, but that's not very sensible and everybody understands that one means on and zero means off. So on the user side, it makes way more sense to send a one to turn it on and a zero to turn it off. So I'll do the handy dandy bang to flip the state. The next thing you do is tell it that it's one byte. And then finally, you actually write it into the GAT database with the CYBLE GAT S write attribute value function. So now we have a handy dandy helper function called update LED. This function can be called anywhere in your source code. And all it does is if it is connected via BLE, it reads the state of the LED and writes it into the GAT database. The next function that we will need is exactly the same thing except for CapSense. So we'll start by checking to find out if we're connected. If we're not connected, then we'll just return out of this thing because there's no need to update the database when you're not connected. If you are connected, it will fall past the if statement and you'll just wanna update the database. So in the above function we did, LED CapSense underscore LED underscore care underscore handle. This time we wanna to talk to the CapSense handle. Happily, Creator created a pound defined for you, just like it did in the above case. This is based on the name you gave it when you configured it in the characteristic when you were setting up the component. The finger position was the global variable that we defined at the top of the program. This is a 16-bit unsigned integer. So the first thing you need to do is you need to cast it into an unsigned 8-bit integer pointer. Then you'll need to tell it it's two bytes. And then, finally, you copy it into the GAT database using the GAT S write attribute value function, exactly like you did above. The difference in this function and the previous function is, do you remember when we set up the component specifically when we set up the CapSense part of the component, we clicked on the Notify button. Notify is a feature of BLE where the other side of the phone can say, every time you get a change in a value, I'd like to know about that changed value. In other words, you can register for notifications of changes in the value. I have a global variable called CapSense Notify, which gets set when the client 
characteristic configuration descriptor gets set. If it's set and the capsence is changed, then I will also, in addition to writing into the GAP database, I'll send out a notification. Cool. At this point, I've created two helper functions, one to update the GAT database with the LED value, one to update the GAT database with the CAPSENSE value. Now on to the next section. When you start up the BLE inside of Creator, which I'll show you in the main loop, first thing you have to do is you have to tell it what is the event handler. So we're going to create a BLE event handler. I'll call this handler BLE callback. So, the BLE callback is essentially a giant case statement, which allows me to deal with the myriad of different events that get called from the BLE firmware. The first two events that I'll handle are the stack turning on or the stack being disconnected. In other words, when you first start going, it gives you the event CYBLE event stack on. And then, after you've been connected and you get disconnected, the event that's called is CYBLE event gap device disconnected. I'll handle these two events exactly the same way. What I'll do is I'll turn off notifications and then I'll start advertising again. I will also start the PWM that drives the blinking blue LED so that I get the blinking light telling me that I'm advertising. There are two situations where you want the light to blink. You want it to start blinking when the chip first turns on to indicate that it's disconnected. The other time you want to start the blinking is after you've been disconnected by the remote side, specifically the Android app side of this equation. So when you've gotten disconnected, the BLE stack will send you the CYBLE event gap device disconnected message. And when you get that message, you start the PWM going so the blue light blinks again. The next event that we'll need to handle is what happens when you've gotten a connection established by the remote side. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to update the GAT database with the current state of the LED so that the Android app can see whether the LED is currently on or off. So it's convenient we wrote a little function that grabs the state of the LED and puts it into the GAT database. So we'll just call that function. The other thing that we need to do is update the GAT database with the CAPSENSE value. This is so the remote end can read the state of the LED and it can read the state of the CAPSENSE. That's handled automatically for you by our BLE stack firmware, which is completely free and comes with the BLE component. The other thing we want to do is after you've gotten a connection established, you'll want to turn off the blinking blue light. So the light will blink blue when you're disconnected and it will be turned off when you're connected. The next event that we can deal with is the write event. This is called CYBLE event GAT S write request. This event gets called when the remote side wants to write into your GAT database. When it asks to write into your GAT database, our stack will tell you which characteristic it's trying to write. And what you need to do is look at all of the characteristics and do something slightly different based on which characteristic the other side is trying to write into. So in the first case, you say, is the LED CapSense LED care trying to be written? In other words, did the remote side try to change the state of the LED? If the answer to that question is yes, then go ahead and update your database with whatever the remote side wrote into you by calling the GAT S write attribute value, just like you did in the update LED function. The other thing you want to do is after they've written into your LED characteristic, you want to go ahead and turn on the LED or turn off the LED based on whether they wrote a zero or a one. Remember, I told you the red LED is active low. So when they write a one, you want to turn it on. And when they write a zero, you want to turn it off except for the fact that when you write a zero, it'll turn on because it's active low. So you'll need to use the bang to flip the state of what they wrote. The bang for you people who aren't big programmers out there is just the exclamation point. Okay, so we're talking about the different write requests. The first write request is if they try to write the LED characteristic. 
The second right request is if they try to change the notification flag for the CapSense characteristic. That's called CYBLE LED CapSense 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 CCCD descriptor handle. Remember, in the previous case, we changed the name of the characteristic CapSense descriptor to be CapSense CCCD so we wouldn't have to type as much. When that happens, you want to go ahead and write into the GAT database with the write attribute value function. And then you want to turn on the global variable flag or turn off the global variable flag for notification based on whether they turned it on or off. This way, when you call the update CapSense function other places in your firmware, if they've said they're interested in notifications, the notifications will be sent out. So we'll modify the global variable that we're using to keep track of the CapSense notify being turned on or off. The last thing you need to do, the BLE spec says that when you get written into, you need to give a response. So in either one of the cases, whether they write into the LED or whether they write into the CapSense CCCD, you need to send a response. And to do that, you use the CYBLE GAT S write response function. At this point, we've gotten the updated LED function, we've got the update CapSense function, we've got the BLE stack event handler function. The last function you need is the main function, and it has two basic parts. It has initialization, and it has the main loop. In the initialization, you'll need to turn on the global interrupts. This is done with the CY global int enable macro. All of these things that we're doing, both BLE and CapSense, are interrupt based, so you'll need to have the interrupts on. The next thing you'll need to do is start the CapSense component, and then you'll need to get the CapSense component to initialize its baselines. Initializing the baselines is a function that gets rid of the baseline noise that's in your system as well as dealing with the parasitic capacitance attached to the sensors, in this case, the slider that's attached to your pins. That's the first step in getting CapSense going. Then the main loop is very trivial. If the CapSense is not busy, in other words, the CapSense has completed and it's not scanning anymore, then grab the finger position using the get centroid pause function. Update your baselines, start the scan again, and then call your helper function that we talked about earlier. That function will take the finger position and write it into the characteristic for CapSense if you're connected. If it's not connected, then it doesn't do anything. So we've dealt with the CapSense, and you'll need to do that every time through your infinite loop. The next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to give BLE the opportunity to process its events. That's done with the CYBLE process events function. Very easy. The last thing you'll want to do is tell BLE that it's welcome to go to sleep, if it can, in which case you'll save power. You do that with the CYBLE enter LPM function. That's it. That's your whole loop. So from the top, we have a function called update LED, which will update the GAT database with the state of the LED. We have a function called update CapSense, which will update the GAT database with the state of the CapSense. We have a BLE event handler that will handle the stack turning on or a disconnection, and it will handle writes of the characteristics from the Android phone application. And the last thing we have is the main loop where we initialize the CapSense, run the CapSense in the infinite loop, and process the BLE events. It's pretty simple. In the next video, I'll show you how to debug your firmware and make sure that it's working properly using CY Smart on your Android phone as well as CY Smart on the PC.